Good evening, Internet. Your health as always. And tonight we're focusing our attention on Eric Johnson, the third of the initial G3 trifecta. Um, there's a little bit of a potted history in the blog that I'll throw a link up to. You'll probably know the drill by now. That's where also you'll find the tabs for all these licks. And uh, we're going to start off by looking at a little bit of a cliche. This is the Eric Johnson lick. Um, <laughs> Now, what I'm doing here, um, this is a simple E minor pentatonic. And I'm starting off with a bend. From D up to E, 15th fret on the B, flat 7 to root. And then I'm going to walk down the minor pentatonic in fives. Now, fives are a bit tricky to count. We'll leave the expletives out just in case. Um, so what I like to try and do is use a word. Pick a five syllable word, I use the word opportunity. Opportunity. It's much, much easier to say that word to a beat and then have your fingers follow the sound that your mouth is making. suits this. Um, so for example, if I'm coming off at the back of this sequence, I'm going to then have played that with a downstroke. I'm going to carry that motion on for the last sequence. Okay, now the next lick isn't actually a lick at all. Um, this is an approach to chords that I find fascinating. This is called uh, open voice triads. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with closed voice triads, or indeed triads at all, uh, let me give you a little bit of background. Triad is a three note chord. Um, if you're playing something like an E, you might look at it and play, well I'm not playing three notes, I'm playing six. You are playing three notes. You're playing E, B, E, G sharp, B and E. So there's actually only three different notes. So you could, if you wanted, play those three notes, for example, here. Second fret on the D, first fret G, open B string. That gives me an E chord, and sometimes that's all you need. Um, we're going to look at the chord of A, A, C sharp, and E. Um, if I was to take a closed voice triad approach across the top three strings, let's say, I would start here, A, C sharp, E, second fret, second fret, open string. That could give me a root position, and I will go to first inversion, which involves putting the third at the bottom of the chord in the bass. So C sharp E A six five five. Then my second inversion will be putting the E the fifth at the bottom of the chord. So E A C sharp nine ten nine. Now open voice triads scuffle that because uh, the closed voice tradition is really something we've inherited from the keyboard. We can be a little bit more creative because we've got more than one place to play each note. Uh, so what I'm going to do here then is start on root position. And rather than going root third fifth, I'm going to go root fifth and then third up on top. And the effect is going to have a being the third being an octave higher. So here's my root seventh fret D. Here's my fifth ninth fret G. And my third, major third there on the ninth fret of the G string. And Eric Johnson, if you watch him in videos, will quite often play this with a hybrid picking style. So that I'm using the pick for the D string, uh, middle and third fingers for the G and the E. I'm then going to invert this then, so my next stop will be going from the third, the C sharp, and place that here on the 11th fret of the D. Then my root, so rather than going third, fifth root, I'm now going to go third, root, fifth, third, root A on the 10th fret of the D string, 5th E on the 12th fret high E, and again you can strum these, they do sound quite funky, but they do sound lovely hybrid picks, or indeed finger picks as well, it's kind of a pianistic approach. And now I'm going to go to the E, 
In fact, I'm going to go down here actually, an octave lower than it's tabbed. And just to show you the principle, so I would be playing fifth root third. So instead, I'm playing fifth third root. Fifth E note, second fret D, third C sharp, second fret B, and root fifth fret on the high E string. Now you might look at that and think, well, why would I play that? Um, and truthfully, unless your name is Alan Holdsworth, you're probably not going to, but you may well play it an octave higher, it's a little bit more accessible. Right, when the next um, six chords are based around the middle four strings, we're basically doing the same thing. So here, root position A of the all known love, instead of playing root third, fifth, I'm going to go root fifth and third. So open second, miss out the G second on the B. Then I'm going to go to the third. Here, so that would be third, fifth roots, now we third root fifth. Fourth on the A, seventh on the D, fifth on the B, C sharp A, E. And then I'm gonna go to the E, and again instead of playing root fifth, root third, I'm gonna play fifth, third, and root. So what I've done there, now you can put the root note high there on the 10th fret of the B string, or you can just cheat and put it on the 5th fret high E. Either way, you get basically the same sound. This one's probably a little easier for strumming. This one's probably a little easier for picking. And then we take the same thing down onto the bottom four strings. I'm gonna start off here. There's my A note. And then there's my 5th there. And then 6th fret on the G string, that's my C sharp. 5th fret E string root note, 7th fret A string 5th, 6th fret G string, there's my 3rd. You probably recognise that because that is old standard A bar chord, I'm just picking 3 notes from it. So none of this stuff is particularly far away from things that you already know, it's important to bear that in mind. We're all working with the same tools, whether it's you or me or Eric Johnson himself. And then I'm going to move on and play from the 3rd, C sharp note, ninth fret of the low E string. Root there on the 7th fret of the D, 5th on the ninth fret of the G. And then finally moving on to the, uh, from the 5th, the E note on the 12th fret. I follow that with a C sharp. And then the A. So 12th fret E, 11th fret D, 14th fret G. Or you could put that quietly on the 10th fret of the B as well. So that is a way he likes to approach chords and um, much as I think he's a brilliant guitarist, the clips I've seen of him explaining his chord approach, I think uh, his natural talent is much more as a, as a performer than a teacher. But that's okay, that's where I come in. <laughs> so I hope you found that useful. Now we'll move on to a couple of looks. This next one is from uh, SRV, uh, which actually features a cameo appearance by Jimmy Vaughan, Steve Ray's brother. Um, I was going to play through this quickly for you. And I should say as well, this is in C sharp minor pentatonic. So let's break this down a little bit. We've got a standard run up, and then we're taking a. So that's almost like a unison bend approach there. And then I do the same idea. And then we're going to follow that by. So taking the same approach, we've moved the bend from the 11th fret G to the 12th fret B, the 12th fret high E. And then I'm going to do. Oh, look, it's our magic three notes 12th fret B, 9th fret B. And then we've got a great big pentatonic rundown. Now, notice there, we've been sequential all the way through the pentatonic until we get to that root note there on the 11th fret D, and then I go to the 11th fret G. So we're missing out on this one here, B note, going straight down to the G sharp, the fifth. And if you're familiar with the Albert King lick, we can consider it a very much a, a, a derivative of that. So that gives us so far. And then we finish off with a little bit of harmonic. Um,
You can see it's live, can't you? <laughs> now the trick to this is to look for visual reference points because you're having to tap harmonics over um, empty, empty space, basically. And you're having to judge the distance by eye. So here, I'm starting to gradually learn that the 14th fret, F sharp note, I can tap that 12th frets up and I can use the position, the edge there of my neck pickup to gauge that. And I can start to be fairly consistent each time. And then here, I'm judging this to be about a centimetre to the, toward the, the uh, bridge. There we go, probably about a centimetre closer to the middle pickup. Uh, so do use those kind of ideas. If you need to, if you're playing a lot of harmonics, I thought that I wouldn't be shy away from maybe making some marks on the scratch plate and um, you know, little adhesive dots or even little uh, marker points just to give yourself a visual reference point. You'll learn it by feel, but you need to calibrate that feel. You're not going to instantly get it by feeling. I'm instantly going to um, bring out these artificial harmonics. Uh, if you're not familiar with the technique, actually, I'm prattling away, I assume you were, uh, what I'm doing here then here, I've got my index finger just resting on the high E string, approximately 12 frets up from my fretted note. So fretted note is F sharp on the 14th fret. I'm roughly guessing where the 26th would be. I've got my first finger ready to take the note and my pick hand thumb comes around and flicks that. And as I pick it, move my hand away and get a lovely belt like sound like that. Um, very, very signature technique of, of Eric's. Right, last one. This is from Zap. And I'm going to deviate from the tab a little bit because after I tab it out, I realise there's a better way of playing it. I'm going to play through this slowly because I'm still not entirely got the hang of it. Uh, so this is using F minor pentatonic and used to imply A flat major through the most of it. <coughs> and so you can see that I'm up in position three minor pentatonic for most of it. Sorry, position two even. And then shift position to position one. Scale. Ending, and once again, on the on, on not a root note, he's only on the fourth of B flat there. And I think that gives a really nice idea of the way he uses cascading pentatonics to flow over each other. And uh, with it comes the idea of stretching out almost in thirds. Uh, you can hear a little bit of, of how Joe Bonamassa will have been influenced by that kind of idea. And I, since I've started playing it, I've found that um, that style has really resonated with me. It's starting to work its way more and more into my playing. Okay, well, I hope that's been of use. Um, please remember to like, share and subscribe for all sorts of free guitar good stuff. And if you've noticed any um, improvements in the audio and visual quality of this video, I'd like to credit them to my good friend Lee Blount, whose channel I will uh, link in the description below. And I will see you next month for Richie Blackmore. Um, so until then, peace, yo.